So over the past, well, three months really, since Brexit has really started properly. Like I say, many Brexiteers were celebrating way back at 2019 as if that was the start of Brexit, going, hey, look, see, nothing bad's happened. And as I were always said in those cases, hey, Brexit hadn't started yet. It starts on on the 1st of January 2021. Uh, is it 2021? Yeah, <laughs> I, got, I, got, I, lost, I lost even where the year is then. Yeah, it starts there. So we've had that now, and we've seen the the ramifications of, of what that means and what the loss of that trade means. And here's the thing. One of the big pillars of Brexit was that we will be able to, you know, replace all this EU trade. But as we have said before on this channel many times and gone over the economic, the economists who are analysing this very thing, they've all said the same thing. This will not help. We cannot just simply join like the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and pretend to be a Pacific nation, because we are not a Pacific nation. We are in slap bang in the Atlantic Ocean, slap bang just off the coast of Europe. You know, it makes far more sense to be in and in and with our giant, our biggest trading partner, and that was with the European Union. Our top 10 countries apart from the USA and China, were all European countries. Even when you go into, like, uh, the top 15 and 20, they were pretty much all dominated by other European countries. You know, distance matters, and countries always trade with their closest neighbours. It's called trade gravity. It is an observable thing, and doesn't matter what the Brexiteers try to say, you cannot you know, you cannot change gravity. Whenever you drop an object, it's going to drop straight to the floor, not float off up into the air. But more about the, this in our article that we're going to cover today, because, of course, there are massive disruptions coming. And, oh boy, if you think you are dealing with disruptions now, wait until the summer, because that, ladies and gentlemen, is where it's really going to kick off. So before we jump into that, uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe if you are new to the channel as well. Welcome. And of course, down below there is a link to my Patreon page and a one of donation link called Buy Me a Coffee, where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And thank you to those people who do support the channel that way. And now, on with the article. So, this comes from The Guardian. And today, uh, today's article is called... <laughs> um, the title is... The collapse of trade with EU will last until the summer. So the collapse of Britain's trade with the EU will continue into the summer after the failure to recruit up to 30,000 customs agents, despite government assurances that normal service has resumed. Industry groups have warned. And of course, that's, the, that's obviously the big lie that the government is trying to do. And I've said it before many, many times this year, the government is going to try and do every single thing it can to try and prove that Brexit is a success. I can already predict that in December we are going to get or the government will release some sort of Brexit report to say, oh, look, this is how well Brexit went this year. Isn't it fantastic? <laughs> Again, we're going to have fun when that gets released. <laughs> so anyway, it continues. Delays and confusion at the UK ports, which have resulted in up to 40% of trucks crossing the channel with empty containers, threatens to put hundreds of small and medium exporters out of business and cost the government millions of pounds in lost trade tariffs. The warning follows the most dramatic monthly fall in exports from the UK to the Europe since records began over 20 years ago. Exports tumbled by almost 41% as thousands of trucks failed to gain entry to the EU, mostly, mostly following customs holdups due to lack of compliant paperwork. Businesses also reported that a lack of customs agents meant that they were unable to respond to orders from customers based in the EU or found that their goods were just returned at huge costs. In January, uh, which marked the first month uh, 
since leaving the EU on terms agreed by Boris Johnson's government. The official data showed that exports, that goods exports to the 27 member bloc fell by a staggering 5.6 billion, while imports fell almost 30 percent or 6.6 billion. And that is a lot of money. That is a lot of money to lose. So the Cabinet Office Minister, Michael Gove, has answered critics of the UK's failure to prepare for border checks by delaying a previously agreed timetable for imports. Under a new scheme, controls on animal imports will be pushed back from April to October and checks on other goods will only take place at UK ports from next January. So already they're trying to scramble for something that they should have been well prepared for. And like I say, if they weren't prepared for it, then why did we not extend the transition period? Which, is, again, it's a valid question. If we were not prepared for this, why did we not extend the transition period? So, oh, there we go. But Brussels has also insisted that the UK exporters comply with EU rules on imports, forcing many British firms to find a customs agent and a vet to clarify that animal products are safe to enter the EU. Richard Burnett, the chief executive of the Road Haulage Association, said that the deluge of exporters needing, uh, needing help to fill in paperwork meant customs agents were turning business away. He said the delay to import checks is welcome, but not a universal fix. We cannot be confident that operations will even be ready on the 1st of October. The number of skilled customs agents and veterinarians in place across the EU to complete the relevant documentation still falls short across what we need. When responding to the trade data, Lord Frost, the cabinet minister responsible for Britain's relationship with the EU, said that this was a unique combination of factors. That means that it was, quote, inevitable that we would see some unusual figures this January. He added that the effects were overall starting to unwind and overall freight volumes had been, quote, back to their normal levels for over a month now. However, Richard Ballantyne of the British um, head of the Ports Association said that most ports had seen a recovery in shipments over recent weeks, though, delay, though, though the delay to import checks had put off the problem rather than actually resolve it. Rod McKenzie of the RHA, the Head of Public Affairs, said that with 40% of containers travelling to the EU without goods, shipment numbers failed to show the full impact of the new Brexit-related red tape at UK borders. He said that the recruitment of customs agents needed to rise by 30,000 to near the 50,000 to cope with the extra regulations. Judging by our own experience of customs agents, they are swamped with calls and are turning away business, which is ridiculous when we have had over four years to actually sort this out. This is this is where I'm thinking, hmm, should I become a customs agent? <laughs> should I become should I should I actually get trained in this? <laughs> you know, if there's if there's that much business out there, maybe maybe I should start looking into this. Set up a sideline uh, in this. You know, we could be ball hat exports, you know. <laughs> It'd be be a good good sideline. So he also added that delays and loss of exports would continue until more customs agents were trained, leading to delays until at least the summer. So, the small and medium businesses are likely to be hardest hit by the death of agents that play the crucial role in handling the mountain of new paperwork being imposed on firms that wish to continue trading in Europe. Alex Alterman, a partner at the accounts, um, a partner at accountants, Blake Rotherberg said uh, and the head of the uh, and the head of the firm's brexit advisory group said that there was no quick fix to this problem we were uh, what we need is to, is an exporter uh, an exporter support scheme to help british companies ministers have asked local chambers of commerce to train new customs agents but the process is understood to be hampered by a lack of information and training of chamber staff to pass on Altman, who is also the chair of the British Chamber of Commerce in Germany, said that to pay customs agents, um, that said that to pay the pay of customs agents agents was low and meant recruitment was difficult. 
He added that extending the customs uh, ex 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 stance at the UK border until the end of the 2021 is a confession by the government that the border operating model is not working. Imports from the EU are still more than 30% down than compared to last year, and businesses are struggling to deal with the new red tape. A spokesperson for the HMRC said, In total, the government has made over 80 million support available to support the customs immediate sector to deal with the EU trade in 2021. HMRC is designed the grant scheme to be flexible and used by the sector to ensure that they can increase their capacity as best to see fit. Whether this involves recruitment, better training or use of IT. Recent, re uh, recent research has shown that the sector expects to see a nearly fourfold increase in their ability to be able to process declarations and that they are Im and that the industry the immediate businesses who also have spare capacity. The British Chamber of Commerce has also told ministers that the, diff the difficulties faced by businesses on the ground go well beyond just teething problems and that the disruption to the UK-EU trade flows had persisted well into March. Some economists have also forecast that the delays at the UK borders will drag on uh, with... Uh, well, sorry, little, there we go, sorry. So some economists have forced... Uh, so, oh, sorry, annoying advert there. Uh, some economists have forecast that delays at the UK borders will drag on growth for at least the rest of the year. While the Treasury's official economic forecaster, the Office for Budget Responsibility, has said that the Brexit deal signed on Christmas Eve would knock four percentage points off UK growth over the long term. So, there you go. Um, like I say, things just aren't looking good. They're, <coughs> they're really not. And like I say, most of these problems that we are facing aren't a problem of well we just need to learn to get better at it the problem is is that there is red tape there where there wasn't red tape there before and the the, the the ironic thing of all of course is that people like michael gove boris johnson nigel farage all all said hey there's so much red tape don't worry we'll leave the eu and we can just get rid of this red tape of course what they meant by that was that they want to cut regulations this red tape that is here was entirely predictable because we said if we become a third country, which is officially what we have become, then we will have to deal with this red tape. Businesses will have to deal. This costs money and time that some small to medium businesses just don't have. And as we've seen before, many small and medium sized businesses were able to grow really fast and enjoy um untold access to the eu because of being in the single market customs union and being in the eu and so they will be able to expand and those small businesses became medium-sized businesses and those medium-sized businesses became large businesses and those large businesses turned into large multi multinational businesses and that was part of the whole brexit thing you know they said, oh, there's this whole economic argument. But when you actually look at the economic argument, it wasn't there. It was just based on this usual, so it was either, oh, sovereignty or, oh, we can cut red tape. But of course, that's not what they meant. It was, <laughs> so once again, it's just turned out to be a whole pack of lies. And of course, as we always said, a uh, Brexit was built on lies and building something on lies is a completely shaky foundation to build an entire economic project on and sooner or later you have to actually put something on those foundations and at the moment the problem is they've been using playing cards to build those foundations and now they're starting to put bricks on top of those foundations and already the foundations are collapsing so as we always said, and as I always reiterate on this, Brexit was built on a fantasy idea of Britain that can't ever exist and existed in a past that we can't ever really recreate. And when fantasy meets reality, reality always wins. So 
Uh, as is always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like and share button on your way out. And of course, down below, there is a link to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And thank you to all those people that do that. And as always, we'll see you all next time.